time. Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I have yet another friend, but uh, someone who is uh, really nationally recognized, uh, Jim Baru. Jim, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you, Dale? Good, 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 good. And, and so Jim's the advisor to the Tech Council Ventures, but that really, you know, that's just one of the many things that he does. I mean, he really does an amazing job of interviewing a variety of speakers and other things, and, and we'll get into that. But, but Jim, I, I want to talk about your origin story. Now, now, where were you born and where you grew up? And your, your family is a, is a legend in the town I live in, New Brunswick. But tell me, uh, you know, tell me about your, your, your background. Sure. Well, I, you're right. I was born, actually, in New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey, and uh, I've grown up in the area ever since. So, um, as you allude to, my family owns a, a family business and uh, in real estate, insurance, and travel. And for, for years after college, after I went to Rutgers, I worked in that business uh, and then went back uh, to grad school. And then after grad school, I came out and uh, was about to take a corporate marketing job and instead saw an opportunity at the Rothman Institute of Entrepreneurship. And I thought, hey, I, I I come from an entrepreneurial family. I like entrepreneurship. Why don't I try this for two or three years? Seventeen years later, <laughs> uh, I finished my tenure there. And so now, where did you go to graduate graduate school? I went to Texas A and M. Oh, Texas A. Oh, really? Wow, wow. And so, uh, I mean, you really are. And and as the audience knows, I'm the executive director of the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, trying to follow in Jim's footsteps. He really did just an amazing job of connecting the organization, and we're trying to build on on the wonderful things that, uh, that he did. And so, so tell me, and this is fascinating to me, when you first got there, um, who, was Leo there or um, you know, the second executive director? And it's, it's a 30-year-old organization, so it's been around a while. Tell me about those early experiences in entrepreneurship, because that's one of the first programs in entrepreneurship in the, in, uh, in the country, literally. That's right. When it started, there was only a, maybe a dozen or two dozen uh, you know, in the country. So it was really one of the forerunners and one of the progressive uh, novel you know, centers of its kind. So when I came, Leo Rogers, the second uh, director, was uh, leading the organization. He had come maybe two or three years after the first inaugural director whose name is Bernie Tenenbaum, right, who right. Uh, got, it off the, got it launched. I, I heard Bernie recently passed away. I, I wanted to meet him. I never did. did had you heard that? Yes, uh, I, I, yes, unfortunately, he did pass uh, away recently. Uh, but he really um, you know, did a lot of the heavy lifting of getting it off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Leo was uh, you know, just a great leader um, and really um, it is the reason the, the Institute is, is, has prospered. Well, but, but you really have, have taken it and connected that, and then we'll get to, uh, um, you know, talking about uh, Tech United. But, you know, one of the th interesting things about Bernie Tannenbaum, who, who not only founded um, the, the Rothman Institute, um, I, I got my MBA at Wharton, and uh, I worked for the Small Business Development Center. And uh, that was my first exposure to consulting, and then I worked for Deloitte Consulting for 11 years. But I found out Bernie Tannenbaum started the Small Business Development Center at Wharton. So uh, that's why I really wanted to meet him and just never got to Princeton to, to see him. But uh, it's amazing in life. You and I have been around a, a little while, how things come and go in life. And so for the young people watching, realize that you just never know when you're interacting with somebody what role they'll play in your life or what role they have played in your life. And so, um, so, so w what you did at, at uh, and you became the, the director in what year? 2003, 2004. Okay. So uh, I was there. So I started in 97, and then um, 2003, 2004 is when I became the director. Okay. And, and, and so I ran it for almost 10 or 11 years. Yeah, you, you really are, are, I think, maybe the longest-serving director. Or yeah, maybe second to Leo. <laughs> the, the, uh, um, so, so one of the things about running a, an entrepreneurial institute, and again, this show is Entrepreneur State of Mind, is that and I'm sure you found that being at a university, you, you get certain opportunities, that you're, you're kind of like Switzerland, where they're not saying you're trying to push your own products, you're trying to make money, or you're trying to do that. So it gives you opportunities to really bring in some brilliant minds and other things. And so I know you were known for doing a lot of different programs. What, what, what probably two or three programs were your favorite as you worked at the Rothman Institute? What, what speakers? Well, I think, um, you know, we brought some really high-level CEOs in, you know, the, Fred Hassan, the head of Sharing Plow at the time, Brent uh, Saunders, the head of Bausch & Lomb at the time, 
So uh, uh, Dan Vesela, the head of Novartis. So that was really great to have. You know, I, I launched an innovation series, so that's why I was able to bring in these speakers. And one of the the top speakers um, was Clay Christensen, mm. and he was amazing. And this was in 2006. I still remember it. Uh, it was really special. He was uh, clearly one of the top academics in the field of innovation, mm. talking about disruptive innovation, which everyone knows today because of him. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, in recent years. Uh, and so th that's one of the programs that is really um, important to me because it speaks to innovation and innovation is so important not only for small but large companies and large nonprofits as well. The other organization, the one that you've uh, really taken to another level is the Veterans Launching Ventures, right? And that is helping our veterans uh, launch businesses and it's such an impactful and important program. And uh, d d did you start that program? I did. Wonderful, wonderful. And as, as you, may have, you may have heard, you know, we're now literally um, because of Zoom, uh, where we've had the program in three countries, you know, 25, 25 states. And in fact, for one of the programs, we had a gentleman calling in, I forget what time it was, in Afghanistan. He's serving in Afghanistan, calling into Veterans Launching Ventures because of his passion for entrepreneurship. And so, uh, so that's such a, such a critically important, uh, important thing. And, 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 and I have to be honest, I, I did not have the opportunity to, to serve. I just value our, the, the folks who've served. But Jim, I, I don't know if you've had this experience. I'm, I'm amazed that more isn't done for our veterans in this country. Yeah, that's certainly a sore issue, right? Um, and uh, they deserve all of our help. And as we both know, they really have great leadership skills. And that's why entrepreneurship is a natural fit for them, um, you know, in, for their career. So that's why it's uh, really rewarding to help them as much as we can, uh, because you know they are very important people to in our society, in our in our nation, uh, for what they've done and and their service, but also because of the leadership skills that they bring. And, and so many of them have, have have they're much more talented than they even believe. And so part of our our role is to really build them up and help them know the potential that they have and and how you know, how they can play such a significant role in America and feed their families and, and do stuff. But, but so much of it is, is, is not having uh, some of the technical knowledge, but a lot of it is confidence going forward. So, so you, left, you left the Rothman Institute, and, uh, and where did you go right at? What year did you leave, and where did you go after that? So I was recruited to run the New Jersey Tech Council, mm -hmm. which is now Tech United, in 2014. Okay. Uh, and so I, you know, after 17 years, I, you know, was looking for some new challenges and this was uh, clearly uh, a great opportunity to, you know, um, sort of uh, strengthen an organization that I had known over the years um, and we collaborated with over the years. And, and so tell a little bit, of, for those of, the, those of the, the folks in the audience who don't know much about uh, the Tech United, what's called Tech United now, yeah. what is the goal of the organization and what, is it, uh, what, what does it do and, and what's, it, what's its mission? Oh, sure. So uh, T Tech United is a technology trade association, much like a chamber of commerce, focused on technology uh, businesses in general. Uh, and so it serves an important role because in New Jersey, there's many tech-related businesses. In fact, I would say and have said when I started that all businesses are now tech businesses, right, or tech-enabled. And that's really important for, for every business, particularly during this horrible pandemic, to really become uh, digitally transformed or able to uh, provide their services or products uh, digitally uh, as well as in person uh, when that's possible. Well, and, and and so if you, if you look at New Jersey as far as a technology hub, I know there's been talk of kind of Silicon Valley of the East, uh, you know, Massachusetts is claiming that, New Jersey is claiming that. Where does New Jersey stand when it comes to technology and innovation in the country, and, and, and honestly, in your mind? Well, I, we have a great legacy of innovation here. Uh, we are the really, in many ways, the, the hotbed and the, the cradle of innovation in this country because of Thomas Edison who created, you know, six or seven new industries, uh, because of uh, Einstein, because of Bell Labs, which created the transistor, right? And this is just a few things, right? There's so many other inventions, but the transistor is the basis of all computing and communications, right? So that smartphone in your hand has a ton of transistors, right? There's 
there's like 16 trillion or something transistors on the planet, right? Wow. Wow. So just those three people and those three companies alone and everything that's built off the people who work there, for example, people who worked at Bell Labs created blockchain. Most people don't know that. They think oh, really? some oh, I didn't know Japanese that. gentlemen created it, but there are researchers from uh, Bellcore that created blockchain. So really? those are just a few of the, um, you know, tech related innovations, plus all the biotech, all the pharma. So we can talk for hours on end about the innovation. Now, over the years, some of that, my, some of that innovation and technology um, sort of ecosystems migrated to Silicon Valley right. because people from here went to Silicon Valley and started that with Fairchild um, semiconductors. And so that built up. So they become the epicenter of innovation technology in the country, to, uh, Silicon Valley. So we're still, you know, two or three uh, as far as uh, capital spend in this area, New York, New Jersey, venture capital, uh, right, Boston right. is growing, but we're still up there as far as uh, technology, you know, powerhouses uh, in the country and in the world. Well, and, and, and thanks to you, I mean, you were, you were, you know, at Tech United for, for quite a while. You know, one of the things people don't really realize, and it's amazing how much is in New Jersey, that the film industry really started in, in you know, Fort Lee, then went to Hollywood. You know, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley started in New Jersey, then went to Silicon Valley. And so, so many of the things, and I, I joke that if you hear somebody's been murdered or you hear something good, there's always a Jersey connection. It's, it's, it's amazing how often and, and, and where we are. And so, um, so, so technology, everybody's talking about technology. I, I just wrote an article in NJ Biz um, talking about a new, um, for Insight, a new uh, technology software that really helps frontline workers, really does training for frontline workers, makes them feel like professionals, help them punch in without, you know, risking COVID and other things. You know, so many of the technology things we hear about are the sexy, you know, social media kinds of events, but there's some great technologies that actually can help to improve the lives of, of, everyday, of everyday people. What are some of the technology things that you're hearing about that are of particular interest, either social media or, or for average folk? Right. Well, I, I think, you know, anything related to telemedicine, mm. there's a lot of things going on there that are really changing lives and, and helping us, um, you know, particularly get through this difficult pandemic. So that's changed. And, and again, a lot of these things are not necessarily the most sexy things and you, they're white labeled. So you're not going to know the brand name. So anything around that, uh, it, it's going to be really important. Of course, anything related to blockchain, right? Again, it's, it's sort of started here and has taken uh, st taken the world by storm, right? And so the blockchain is the underpinning of everything, whether it's cryptocurrency or NFTs, which or tokenization, which I think has got a lot of potential uh, going forward. So those are some of the you know um, things that we we don't necessarily hear about the telemedicine, everything related to healthcare. But uh, the things that we hear about blockchain, cryptocurrency is obviously in the news a lot in NFTs. So those are just two examples of things that sort of emanated from here and, and sort of are, are scaling from entrepreneurs and leaders in this state and region. And, and, and so, Jim, you know, a lot of us that are in the business world here, blockchain, and we have a pretty good sense of, of what the capabilities are. We, you know, we don't know the, the technology necessarily under underpinning it but so so blockchain is really kind of the most secure system for for this for the for the the average person what say a little bit about what is blockchain because people hear it all the time and don't quite understand they always think it's bitcoin that blockchain and bitcoin are the same but they're not talk to me about that yeah you know blockchain I, i'm not giving it again to the technical because i'm not an expert but i'll just say it's a way uh to conduct secure transactions um it, it, while maintaining privacy, right? So it, it can really affect all types of businesses, not just cryptocurrency, but smart contracts is one, one area which is really uh, important or, or even supply chain where you wanna track products in a secure way. So there's a lot of ways to leverage blockchain, which again is just it's what's it's called ledger, but I don't wanna get into the technical uh, issues of that. Uh, all people need to know is that it's a really, um, uh, elegant system where things uh, can be uh, identified um, and coded in a way that makes secure transactions uh, possible. And, and so that's the fundamental of it, uh, the fundamentals of it, and, and it really will ha have so much impact in the years ahead. And, and just to, again, to clarify, so, you know, 
Bitcoin and blockchain, you know, Bitcoin uses blockchain, but they're not the same. And so, you know, because people, you know, used to really mention them both in, 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 in the same conversation. And then, then going back to, you talked about medicine, there's a lot of discussion of using DNA, that eventually technology is going to really be able to customize medicine for everybody based on their DNA. And so, uh, you know, we're hearing about that. I don't know if you've ever come across anything recently. I'm sure you've heard about things. Have you seen any technology related to that that's coming down the pike? Well, I, I think all the genomics, um, you know, and there's, there's a lot going on there where people, you know, you can sequence your genome for $100 and very, and soon, very shortly, maybe within the next year. Right. And that will allow doctors to sort of um, provide personalized medicine. And that changes everything, right? But on the other hand, there's a company called Cellularity mm -hmm. that um, is is aiming to make your make you live longer through you know injections or you know I don't want to misrepresent, but he's got some great technology. His name is Bob Harari, Dr. Bob Harari, and that's just one example of technology coming to bio, coming to you know pharma and biotech to create um, you know really transformative innovation which will extend our lives. Wow, wow. I mean, it's, just, it's extraordinary what's, what, what's happening. A, a friend of mine um, was, uh, was talking about some of the Silicon Valley programs for uh, um, up and coming young, you know, young future technology entrepreneurs. And uh, they have um, almost a fellowship, if you will, where they compete and then they're venture capitalists that give money. Do we have anything like that in New Jersey or, or could we start anything or, you know, in, in New Jersey as a whole? I, I have a real passion for urban areas, but is there anything that, that, that comes to mind that, that where, where young folks with incredible technology ideas can kind of compete for funding? Right. I think you have an idea of those. I mean, we have a pitch competition for right, universities. Right. There's different competitions, right? But it's, we have an informal and helpful network in New Jersey, which isn't the same as Silicon Valley, but certainly making progress. So the good thing about New Jersey is everyone knows each other, right? right so right, it's, it's right. pretty, <laughs> even though we have 9 million, peop 9 million people in the state, in the tech and innovation and entrepreneurship community, most people know each other and can make introductions and everyone's willing to help each other. And that's a really important aspect of a, of a startup ecosystem is the generosity of people willing to help each other and guide them uh, and, and, you know, help them get funding. You know, I know I've done a lot of that for the past 20 years and I, I look forward to continuing to do that because it's an important part to connect people uh, and help them succeed. And one of the, one of the best uh, ways to connect are the, uh, these these tech tech groups around the state, um, you know, I don't know how many there are. I know what we host one. At, well, we used to host one before the pandemic at FDU, um, but we will start hosting uh, hosting that again in in person. Um, so talk a little bit about those tech meetups that are that are around, and because because again, the tech group knows these things exist, but I think a lot of people outside of technology or are new to technology or have new ideas don't really know about these, uh, these meetups. And obviously they've changed in 2020, but they'll come back. Uh, say a little bit about that. Sure, so, the, so these meetups have been great over the past, I guess, 12 years or so. Uh, they've been, uh, you, know, you know, New Jersey is fragmented and that's in some ways very, very good. We have hubs and hotspots all around the all, state. All over the state. Um, uh, uh, there's not just one, eco, not one center, uh, right? Uh, so that's important that there's meetups in every area. Yep. The, uh, uh, people Jim, can come Jim, together in person. Let, let me hold you, hold you there because we're going to take a commercial break. I want to I wanna really come to that because this is really, really important because a lot of people are watching or looking forward to how do I, how do I connect with people to hear my, my invention? So we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll pick that up. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Plan your New Jersey trip at visitnj.org. Waves of fun. Nights of excitement. And a trail of memories. Now that's New Jersey.
plus this equals this, plus this, and this. Don't drink and drive. Back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. We have Jim Baroud, um, who is an advisor to, the, to tech, the Tech Council Ventures, as well as a whole bunch of other things. And we were just talking about the meetups. And, and Jim, you were really talking about kind of the, the good and bad of New Jersey when it comes to, to multiple meetups. So, so uh, continue your, your, your thought process. Sure. As I said, there's, there's hubs of great uh, innovative tech activity around the state. Right. So there are meetups, which are, you know, organized usually monthly or every other month uh, get togethers where they talk about different topics of interest to the community, whether it's how to grow your business or a new technology um, or, uh, you know, how to get funding. Right. So these meetups and other types of similar organizations um, do things all the time. And you just have to check your calendar and there's different um, newsletters that will give you a listing of those um, events. Uh, I have an e-blast uh, or email list, which I, I list events as well. And I'm sure uh, you do too, Dale. Esther Sheridan does, um, you know, a list of events every week. Uh -huh. She has a, a, a newsletter called New Jersey Tech Weekly. New Jersey Tech Weekly. So, okay. Remember that, so, New Jersey Tech yeah. Weekly. Look that up. Google that. Yeah. No. So, so the point is, there are there's activity everywhere right it's just a matter of going out there and finding it and now as you as we both know dale with uh, the pandemic has has led to a lot of transformation into online guidance and information like like this show right so if you can't find it in your local area say you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to drive far everything is online now and i would encourage everyone to really look for uh you know, conferences, get togethers online to learn and meet other people. And that's really going to be an important skill for the future. So if you can do well by networking and engaging people online um, as you start a business or as you grow your business, that will be really uh, helpful to your success. Well, and, and so one of the questions that, and I, I wanted to save it towards the the end of the show and so you know if, if, if we have people out there saying I've got this great invention it's state-of-the-art technology but I need financing I need funding so uh, you know and, and everybody thinks that the great the, the greatness of the idea is significant enough to, to to get people to give you money because you, you'll see how great it is as, as much as I do so but so what what have you learned over the years on what companies should do uh, or future companies should do about financing, planning, strategizing? What are some of the secrets that you could share with the audience? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that now is probably easier than ever in our history to raise money, mm -hmm. right? So now that shouldn't s sort of get people super confident, right? You still have to have a good idea. Right. You have to um, be a good leader, right? Um, and be able to persuade people to invest in your company, right? But First and foremost, people are going to go to their friends and family for money and get things going. Or on the other hand, things are so cheap to start. It's so cheap to start your business these days. Yeah. You could probably do it by yourself with your own funding. Right. Of course, there's also crowdfunding. Okay, and then there, then there is banks, and then there are angel investors, and then there is you know later stage money, which is venture capital, and then even later stage, which is private equity, and even later stage, which is you know these days you can do a SPAC. You right. know, so things are. There's, there's, there's a lot out there. The, the point is you have to find, you know, you have to make sure your product has a customer base and get some customers and, you know, um, and then it'll be easier to raise funds. But there is, and then there's some state uh, programs which can help as well. Yeah, and, and yeah, and there are more and more state programs now because of, uh, you know, funding from the pandemic. And I know NJ, you know, the, the, uh, the Economic Development Authority is, um, is, is really passionate about getting money to, especially in, in, in urban communities. 
Um, so so when, you're, when you're looking for funding, you know, say uh, um, it's important that you've invested, that you've gone to friends and family first, right? I mean, they, they want to know that you have skin in the game. Is that, is that, is that pretty true? Absolutely. And it's just the easiest money to get, right? Mm -hmm. Friends and family who are you know, related to you and, and have an interest in your success and may not have the strictest terms. Of course, if you do that, you still have to have some, you know, the right forms, the right paperwork. People get into trouble when they just take money on a handshake and, you right. know, things go awry, you know, invariably, you know, a lot, a lot of start, most startups don't, don't succeed. So right. you want to make sure at least you are doing it in a proper way that at least alerts those investors, even if they're friends and family, to the possibility of not um, getting their money back, mm -hmm. you know? And so that, that's really important to at least put some formality into it as much as, as painful and as, as, a head, as much of a headache that is, it's important to do it. Well, and that's, that's such, a, such a great point. And, and nowadays online, you can probably get some of the, the forms or you know, if your friend is an attorney or something. And so you get some of that money. But, but when you're looking for that money, the money should, should really be more around marketing, not, not income, right? I mean, that, that money is not about you making, you know, getting paid. It's really about getting this product developed into market. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. You, you, at this stage, it's all sweat equity, which mm -hmm. means you don't pay your anything. You don't pay yourself anything until maybe t one or two or three or four years later. You're working and, and, and putting all that money, well, any profits you might have or any revenue you might have, back into the business mm -hmm. to make sure it's stronger and can grow more effectively. So, so one of the one of the the, the challenges. Now, I have a 16 year old daughter. I know you have some wonderful young young kids we've played, played tennis with, and, and uh, um, you know, one of the challenges for young people is, is you know, this, this, this thrill of, of making money quickly. And so in a lot of economically challenged communities, like when I grew up, you know, I, everybody wanted to be a basketball player or an athlete, but if you weren't six, seven, you probably weren't gonna make the NBA. But now, everybody thinks they can be a rapper. And so that's a challenge, and so if I don't need to study, uh, um, you know, I'm gonna be a rapper. And so, on the other side, in the tech world, everyone thinks they're going to have an unprofitable business that Google's going to pay a billion dollars for because you have, you know, 10 million subscribers. And so, they don't realize that's like winning the lottery, but you hear these stories. And so, what do you say to people who say, well, my goal is to, I don't care about making a profit, I just want to make something that's going to be attractive to, to Google or Microsoft or something. Yeah, I, I think it's it's great to be inspired by those entrepreneurs, but um, people have to sort of have a little, uh, let's say, humility and uh, understand that the statistics are not very uh, hopeful, right? So it's that the, those companies being bought by Google or or, or a bigger company or maybe one in one in five hundred, right, or one in a thousand. Yeah. So. Uh, and the prospects of starting and launching a successful business are, are rather low too. Right. You know, depending on the statistics, it's you know two or three out of every, or two or four out of every will be successful, right? right. To some extent. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to sort of understand that it's not easy. You need to work your butt off, mm -hmm. and you need to um, to never give up, mm -hmm. right? And, and to really uh, take uh, rejection well. Uh, and to learn from mentors and, and people who know more than you uh, and to take that guidance and, and try to do the best you can to build your business. Uh, and so, you know, I think you have to constantly, you know, for as long as I've known, you, you have to say that it's gotten a little worse because of all the social media and all yeah. the glamour around entrepreneurship and people saying it's so easy. Right. Um, but the reality is it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's, it's a lot of, of, of hard work. Well, Jim, this is some great brilliance, and unfortunately we're, we're at the end of the show. How do people get in touch with you? Is there an, um, a website or something that they can, uh, they can follow so to get more information about your programs and you? Sure. Well, the best way is just to simply find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one, James Barud. And, uh, you know, we'll connect from there, and I'll be happy to help. Anyone, you know, I've, again, I've, I've based my career in helping other people succeed in business. So feel free to reach out. Happy to help in any way I can. And you've done a great job. And so there is only one Jim Baroud, and I'm happy to have him on Entrepreneur State of Mind. I want to thank you all for watching. We will see you next week. And uh, Jim, have a good one. I look forward to catching up uh, with you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.